At this point I've gone ahead and fitted the floor into the body. And what I need to check next is just how well it fits. Uh, in the back here where we're going to go ahead and do the, the plug welding, looks like we're in good shape. In the front firewall, fitting pretty good. There's a few areas here that will draw up when we go to bolt this, we'll be able to pull this up. That'll work okay. That's not fitting too bad. We have, uh, we have a little issue here. We may have to do a little heating to pull this in. Might have to heat the metal there to re reformat a little bit with a hammer to get that in. But again, pretty close. We're tight there. All that will clamp or bolt up pretty well. So we're fitting pretty good all along the firewall. That looks pretty decent. Now, the other thing we've done is gone ahead and installed the fuel tank and the fuel tank straps and the seat. Anything that affects or touches the parts that you're putting in, you want to put in and try. Make sure they're going to fit. Now, one issue on the seat frame, or excuse me, on the gas tank, one issue when they're putting the new floor in, the gas tank brackets here that hold the strap on, these are not included with the body. So these, if you don't have these off your used body, you want to get them from your supplier, you want to be able to put these on and fit them in, both the front one and the rear one. You'll see we fit the gas tank and we've tack welded them in place. Once we have the gas tank back out of there again, we'll weld them a little better. We've also fitted the seat in to make sure we weren't going to have an interference problem there. And we do have a bit of a problem right here. Uh, this customer had moved this seat frame back. As you can see here, he moved the seat frame back to get more room. Uh, that was fine when he had the CJ2A tank in it. You can see where we welded up the side of the body where the CJ2A tank was in. Now that we're putting the correct MB floor in it and the correct MB fuel tank, now we got an issue here with the fuel filler not going to fit where the seat goes. Uh, that's not going to be a real big deal. Uh, you can see where the customer had extended the seat frame in the past in order to get more room behind the steering wheel. So what we'll do there is you know, now that we tried it out, fitted it, know we got a problem, we'll move the seat pan front three inches later on before we go to install it. But at least we've, we've found an issue now before getting this all welded in. Now in the case of that seat frame, it really wouldn't have made any difference in the floor anyway, but you want to make sure that your gas tank fits in properly. We got the straps on, the straps go to the side of the body properly. This all fits and works. You know, whether it's a front floor, rear floor, any kind of a panel you're putting on, when you're doing something like this, you want to make sure that all those affected parts that uh, go with it are going to fit and work before you go welding this floor in. So at this point, we're just about ready to start bolting this floor in a little bit better and getting ready to start welding it. But check, check, recheck, sit and look at it a little bit and think about it, make sure before you start welding that you've got everything in place and it's all going to work. detail of the rear gas tank strap bracket and the front gas tank strap bracket. Before we get ready to weld this body in, this floor pan in, we've cleaned the edges where we're going to weld it. We've gone ahead and uh, punched some holes in there and now with a high copper uh, content spray Weld through primer. We're going to apply a weld through primer. The weld through primer has a high copper content, and that way it gets good electric conductivity, so the electric arc welder 
will make a good weld and still leave primer there and it's going to keep the seam from getting rusty. So we'll treat all the areas we're going to weld with this particular copper weld, high copper content weld through primer before we fit the body to the floor for the final time and get ready to weld it in. There are a lot of places on this body to hold it together so we get it welded. I'm using a self-tapping sheet metal screw like the one I have here. And what we're doing is we're using those in the holes that we previously drilled in order to hold the sheet metal in place until such time as we get ready to weld. different areas where it's hard to get a clamp or where we just simply don't have enough clamps we're going ahead and using things like those sheet metal screws they're only going to be here temporarily we will be taking them out as we do our welding here in the firewall they're particularly handy where it's real hard to get a clamp you'll see that as we discussed earlier in the project all along areas where it's real hard to get a clamp in We've gone ahead and used these sheet metal screws after we've drilled those holes and punched the holes that we're going to weld through. This has brought the part together pretty well. Now the fit of the firewall to the to the uh, fit of the firewall in against to the to the original firewall in against to the floor plan was not perfect. You can see a number of spots where I've done some hammering kind of hammer the, hammer the two parts a little bit more in the closer fit as we screw them in. All along here where these various very difficult tur very difficult bends are, I've done some hammering, pulled those in tighter, ran the screws in. So all these marks here for me tapping and hammering on this to bring those two together. And then we got them pretty much together. At this point, they're together pretty nice. They fit real tight all the way along the firewall. I'm quite happy with the fit up. And as I said, what we'll be doing is we'll be going along here and welding in these holes that we pre-drilled. And then we'll be removing the screws and welding in those areas. We've got clamps to clamp the other sections together. 
holding this far this floor in position. What we'll be doing is welding a little bit, moving the clamps along, welding some more, moving the clamps along, welding some more, making sure everything is tight and tight and we got a nice proper fit up. So now after quite some time here, now we're finally ready to start welding. And here we've got the uh, welding done. We've got the floor panel in, all welded up. All the screws removed, replaced by welds. A lot of work, no doubt about it. Not exactly a couple hour project, but the results are well worth it. Take your time. Make sure everything's gonna line up for you. The welding is the easy part. The preparation and fitting is the tarp takes the time. Getting everything ready, getting it all fit up the way you want, getting it clamped and screwed in the way you want. The welding goes pretty quickly. We did use a nice wire feed welder. We had this nice rotisserie to roll the body around on. We had a plasma cutter to cut the old stuff out with. It's pretty handy to have all those tools, but you can, uh, you can do a similar same job with saline torch and a saber saw and an air chisel. And you know, it just takes a little longer, a little harder work. Get some buddies to help you roll the stuff over. If you don't have a rotisserie to roll the body around with, it's doable. It just depends on how much time you've got and what you want to put into it. Works out as a pretty nice job.